Here's the very first core value that has to do with, with work. All work is honorable as long as it's not immoral or illegal. Do you want to know what's wrong with this younger generation? And when I say this younger generation, I want you to understand if you're younger, I'm not necessarily saying that it's wrong with you. You're probably the exception. In fact, according to your parents, you're fantastic. I'm talking about all the others. But you want to, want, you want to know what's wrong with this younger generation? They think they're too good to do certain jobs. They actually think that there are certain jobs that are beneath them. It's true. I've actually heard our own youth here at Cornerstone Fellowship make comments like this. I would never work in fast food. Or I would never work at a nursery. Parents, listen to me. If your child ever says that they would never work at a certain type of job, you get in their face and you let them know real fast that if you ever hear them say that again, you'll get them a job doing exactly that. Because all work is honorable as long as it's not immoral or illegal. And then if they do say that again, then you carry through with your threat. You don't ever draw a line in the sand unless you're ready to enforce it. And to go all the way if necessary. So if your child says it again after you've warned them, then you go to McDonald's or you go to the Sonic and you fill out a work application for them. You personally take them to work and you pick them up. And then you tell the manager if they have any problem with your child to call you because you will come down there and you will embarrass them in front of their co-workers as you set them straight. Why? Because you want to teach your child that all work is honorable as long as it's not immoral or illegal. If you're doing some type of job that's not immoral or not illegal, you have nothing to be embarrassed about. It doesn't matter where you work. In fact, let me show you something interesting. Turn with me, if you would, to the book of Genesis chapter 2, verse number 15. Notice what this says. Remember, these core values are biblical and they're based on certain scriptures. The Lord God took the man and they put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and to take care of it. To work it and to take care of it. To work it and to take care of it. So Adam's first job was working in the Garden of Eden. He was a gardener. Now, what amazes me about this is neither God nor Adam thought that he was overqualified to be a gardener. Think about it. Before the fall, Adam was a perfect human being. He was perfect mentally. He was perfect physically. He was perfect spiritually. And he was perfect emotionally. He was, for all intents and purposes, a perfect human being. In fact, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul referred to Jesus as the second Adam. Which tells you something about the first Adam. Yeah. Think about it. If Jesus was a perfect human being and he's referred to as the second Adam, then the first Adam must have been a perfect human being also. At least until the fall. Do you follow my reasoning? In fact, we get a glimpse at just how smart Adam was in Genesis chapter 2 verses 19 and 20. Notice what it says. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was his name. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds in the sky, and all the wild animals. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So Adam named, not some, but all of the birds and animals. Now, according to Fact Monster, no one knows for sure how many species of animals actually exist on this earth. In fact, almost 10,000 new species are discovered each year. But scientists estimate that there are about 8.7 million different species on this earth. 6.5 million on land and 2.2 million in the oceans. Now, according to Genesis chapter 2, verse number 20, this is what's kind of interesting about this. Adam named all of the birds and the animals on the land. 6.7 million different species. Now, how smart do you have to be 
to not only name 6.7 million different species, but to remember their name. Some of you can't even remember the names of your children if you have more than two. <laughs> and sometimes I only had two. I get it wrong. Micah, Dad, I'm not Micah. I'm Macy. I know who you are. <laughs> I'm talking to you. You know what I said. Macy, Dad, I'm Micah. I know you're Micah. You know, my dad would just go through the list. Yeah. Riddell, Carol, Doug, Alan, Steve, whoever you are, get over here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Adam named 6.7 million species and he was able to remember the name. Now, I want you to think about this. The average person only has 40,000 words in his vocabulary. You only know about 40,000 words. If you don't believe that, go home, take out a dictionary and start going through it. Don't look at the definitions. Look at those words and see how many you know. You'll know only about 40,000. Adam named 6.7 million different species and remembered their name. Adam must have been a brainiac. And yet he didn't think he was too good or too smart to be a gardener. And neither did God. Now what does that tell you? That tells you that in God's eyes, all work is honorable. As long as it's not immoral or illegal. But let's go a little bit deeper. Turn with me, if you would, to the book of Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. And I want you to notice the very first clause. Whatever you do. Whatever you do. Whatever you do. Work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Now, do you see that? Whatever you do. Now, do you know what that tells me? It tells me that from God's perspective, what I do for a living is not nearly as important as how I do it. In fact, that's so good. That's a principle and I'm going to give it to you. And I want you to write this down. This is a principle that you need to teach your children. Listen to me. When it comes to work, what you do is not nearly as important as how you do it. And Adam is a great example of this. As I said earlier, Adam was a gardener. His job was to take care of the Garden of Eden. So he did nursery work. And since this is worth repeating, I'm going to say it again. Neither God nor Adam thought that, uh, thought that Adam was overqualified to be a gardener. In other words, Adam was not, too, was not too good or too smart to work at a nursery. So that's the very first core value you need to instill within your children that pertains to work. All work is honorable as long as it's not immoral or illegal. But how does this core value help your children make wise decisions? Well, let's suppose that they go work for a company. And the company gets into financial problems and so they have to lay off workers. So they lay off your child. Let me tell you something. If you've instilled this core value within your child, immediately they will start looking for work. They're going to decide that it's better to be employed than unemployed, regardless of what the job is. In other words, within them is going to be this core value that it's wrong to sit home without a job. So if they can't find another job in their field, or they can't be in a management position, they're not too good or too smart or overqualified to go work at Walmart or go work at Reesers. Let me just tell you something. If you decided you wouldn't want me or you didn't want me, I can't ever imagine that. Something would be wrong with you if you thought that. But if you did think that, I want you to understand something. I would not think that I'm too good to go to Walmart and apply for a job, or if I have to, to flip burgers at Sonic or flip burgers at McDonald's. But I'm going to get a job, and pretty soon I'm going to be running that place. <laughs> My wife will tell you that's true. But I understand, and hopefully you understand this, it's wrong to sit at home without a job. Now, if you retired, that's different. 
You have what's called passive income. You've worked hard enough. You've been wise enough. You've put away so that when you hit your golden years, you get to enjoy it. Your work might be golf and fishing and hunting. Your, golf, your, your job might be traveling. You get to do that because you worked hard. But if you're a college graduate and you get out and you can't find a job and you move back in with mom and dad and they want to know if you apply for jobs, you say, well, there's no jobs in my field. Well then, honey, I brought you a work application down at Supermart or at the convenience store or at one of the fast food chains. You are not too good or too smart or overqualified to work there. And when you instill that within your children, they'll make the right decisions. What's wrong with America is we have people who think that they're too good to work certain jobs. And let me tell you something, all work is honorable. All work is honorable. I haven't heard an amen yet. All work is honorable. As long as it's not immoral or illegal. There are certain jobs I won't do. Why? Because I'm going to stand before God one day. And I'm sorry, I'm not going to tell God I did that. But if I don't have to worry about that part, I'll take any job. My dad ingrained that within me when we were young. Now you need to understand, I'm using this as a euphemism. But Riddell and I used to say, Dad would pimp us out to do anything. <laughs> and that was not to be taken sexually. We weren't saying that. But people would call because their children wouldn't do certain work and say, George, would your boys like to... They'd love to do that. No, we didn't want to do that. <laughs> but my dad taught me that all work is honorable. As long as it's not immoral or illegal. And I can remember the few times that I would see certain friends while I was doing those type of works. And I'd be embarrassed. And if my dad ever saw that, he'd look at me and said, Son, all work is honorable. As long as it's not immoral or illegal.